What's good, everyone? This is Dr. Nee Darko. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so that you're always up to date on the new uploads as well as alerts on this show. The other thing that you can do to help build this community is make sure you leave a comment below. Let us know what you like, what you don't like about the show. And ultimately, let us know who's winning these arguments because I need to know that I'm beating Renee in these debates. Run the tape. You know, one of the locums positions that I'm at, like, I found out that a PA is actually leaving mm -hmm. and is going to go locums also. So, guys, even within the, the physician assistant realm, like, you can do locums. And what I'm finding out without giving too much details is that folks just want their freedom. You yeah. know, like, folks want to be able to work when they want to work. You are free. You know, and, and because, you know, you're working in a temporary fashion, because usually whatever facility that you're working at really, really needs someone, like, now, mm -hmm. they pay more for you than they would pay for a regular salary doc. Mm -hmm. And I think we the, the calculation is, like, what, 30% more than what, they would pay you 30% more than what they would pay for a salary doctor. Yeah. You know, I mean, so if you think about it, the, you know, the advantage is still with the hospital, right? Because they don't have to pay, you know, um, payroll taxes, for example, right? You're not going through payroll. Nope. So they don't have to pay payroll taxes. They don't have to pay any sort of benefits. So health benefits, nope. disability benefits. Nope. They don't have to pay CME. Right. They don't have to CME. pay for, yeah, 401k. They don't have to pay PTO, right? Because remember, hospitals, when you're employed, they have to pay you even when you're not working, right? So if I decide I'm going to take a two week vacation, I have to get paid for that. Mm -hmm. So they're even paying you, you know, they're even, they're paying you only when you work. So, you know, this is not a disadvantage. Oftentimes I just had a discussion with the doc, um, explaining that actually, this not paying benefits is actually beneficial to the hospital. Um, and it does work out to your benefit as well. So it's a win-win, which I don't know why most more hospitals. I think it's, I'll tell you why they do don't do that. I'll tell you why they don't, they don't consider it because there's two things. So with locums, it's unpredictable for them. Okay. Right? So because you can be like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not ready. I'm not available for next month, mm -hmm. but I'm available the month after that. Right. So they want predictability in their schedule, mm -hmm. in their scheduling. And it is a little bit expensive for them, right? I'm not saying it's 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 not as expensive as having us. Because think about it: if if you're a salary doctor, if you make four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, you actually are costing the hospital more than four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, absolutely. What's it coming out to, like? Oh, it's got to be at, also actually between like thirty and fifty percent more. Yeah, because. Because now, of all the, the benefits. The $450,000 is just the salary that they right. owe you, but they still have to pay for disability insurance for you. They still have to pay for medical malpractice, mm -hmm. health insurance, your 401k, the match that goes into it, CME, all of those different things yeah. make it way more than four hundred and fifty. dollars It's in the 500, 600 right. range. So just, just so you know, but I do think that a portion of that a large portion of that has to do with, they can't predict w what the schedule is going to be. Mm -hmm. And there's a lack they need of control. To have control. Yeah. There's a lack of control. Right. This is a I think fight over control. Yeah. I think economics plays a big role mm -hmm. also. But I think if any CMO or if any CFO, when they look at this, they're just like, mm. so who's going to be covering next month? <laughs> well, we don't know yet. You know, and it's like, so that's kind of how I look at it. So that's why I think a lot of people, including what I'm hearing from physician assistants, they're just kind of like, look, like I can go anywhere and work and I can work two weeks or I can work one week and then travel for three weeks and then, you know, kind of have a lifestyle where like, you know, I go and live in New in Europe and then come and work for a week in the United States and then be out for another three weeks. Like you can make this work any way. Like this is something that you can make work any way, any fashion you want to. So, yeah, yeah. I've well, been, I've been, you know, I was listening because I, I got in my notes here, like why someone would do it. And I was listening to a podcast on music. I'm not going to name which one, but I really like this podcast. And I'm listening to the complaints of this person who's in the music industry or who has left the music industry. And, you know, some of the things that they talk about is like their inability to collectively bargain, right? Mm -hmm. The artist from an right. artist perspective, right? Right. Because if they can collectively bargain, if they had a union between like the, the artists, whatever genre they are. They just have more ability to go to an eight, a label like Universal and what have you and say, we want to get paid more, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have these 360 deals now where you sign with a record company 
and let's say you end up becoming a huge star. Well, the 360 deal means that they own every piece of revenue that you have. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, you make a big hit making an album. Well, they're going to get a whole bunch of money from that. But let's say, for example, you want to go on tour. Well, they get a piece of that. Let's say, for example, you get put on TV, right? They want you on TV for some reason. They're going to get a piece of that. They have that in medicine also. Like my first contract actually said that if, so I would work for two weeks and then I'll have two weeks off. Mm -hmm. And then you remember like this, the, it said in there, if I did anything else, if I got income doing anything else, working as a physician, <laughs> no, it said working outside of the hospital. Didn't it say that? It said working outside of the hospital. Yeah, the reason I remember that was because our attorney went back to them and said, so if he opens up a flower shop, does he owe you revenue from the flower shop? And that's when that clause got taken out. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of, well, that's a uh, parallel right there, you know, and, the question is, are you necessarily getting your fair share of the sweat equity that you put into this as a doctor? Because the hospital, you know, they, they have to put up the, the building. They have to put up and hire people and so forth. The equipment, but the there's a lot of sweat yeah. equity that you put in, right? We're talking about, you know, close to over a decade of education, schooling, mm -hmm. not to mention, the you know, $100,000 of student loan debt. They can't operate without you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you know me already. I, you know me. I tend to be more... Um, revolutionary about this and i feel like everybody should be locums in some form or fashion you ain't got to be 100 percent, but i feel like they should be locum <laughs> in some form or fashion but that's what i look at it like yeah. i i look at it almost like the music industry where you're making a lot of money for people right you're making a lot of people you're making a lot of money for people you may not necessarily be making that money for yourself or i mean there's artists who are just like look like i want to make this type of music but the music label is saying no you have to make this type of music that's going to play to the masses Mm -hmm. So that kind of goes into like the autonomy of doctors also, right? Yeah. Like you have to practice this way or you can't have this day off and so forth. So yeah. it's just interesting when you look at the parallels and I think in general, just corporate, anything that's corporate doesn't like take into, uh, doesn't think about the individual. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. why for me, I like locums because that gives me that barrier right there to be like, listen, I'm not available that day Yeah. or I can't do this. And I'm out. And I know that you guys need coverage, but I'm not available that day. My son has Halloween. Can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You think that's what uh, people experience with Diddy? Oof. We did not talk about Diddy. But we will have to do that on another day because that's the end of this podcast episode. Yo, who would have thought the Diddy that we grew up with? The Puff I think, Daddy. I think people would have thought that me. Are you serious? Were you thinking that? Well, maybe not in the 90s, but... Bad behavior, yo. Bad behavior. Maybe about starting about 10 years ago, maybe, people started being hip to game. Have you ever thought about, like, what it would be like if medicine was like... Like, we talk about the music industry, but what if, like... like, Is there a Diddy in medicine? Is there a Diddy in medicine? Yeah, I think so. Who's it, a Diddy in medicine? I don't know, but I mean... Not, not who, but, like, what, what kind of... What scenario is there a Diddy in medicine? So in order for there to be something like, it, in essence, is there someone who takes like severe advantage of people at their lowest point, right? <laughs> well, that's the entire medical education that's, industry. But, that, but that's why I'm just like, yo, medical you got, education is Diddy. <laughs> that's why you got to look, you got to look, but no, not like that, right? But <laughs> And but you have people who are in certain positions and they like you, you have people who are at a certain position in order to get to here. They have to do and make certain sacrifices. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that, like, for example, you got to take student loans out mm -hmm. or you have to put in a huge like investment to play the game. Mm -hmm. Right. And you owe them with either, you know, paying those loans back or with your time as an academic or what have you. Mm hmm. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if there's someone specifically like like Diddy in medicine. I don't know. I, I, let's, let me tell you, I would hope What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Y'all think there is? I would hope not. I would hope Should not. Should we encourage people to write in? <laughs> if you do write in about that, we will make sure to keep you anonymous. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. yeah, we will make sure to keep you anonymous yeah. um, if you have experienced something like that. And if you have experienced something like that, one... 
um, seek action to definitely go to therapy. Um, but yeah, I don't know that our podcast is the only platform that you would want to cover that. Hold on. Before we, we get on out of here, though, I do need to say, Philip, thank you very much for writing in. Yay. Those who want to know more about like why we considered going into locums or why you may want to consider going into locum tenants, we got something that you want to check out. It's a nice little uh, sheet, nice little gift that we want to give to you. It's called the seven considerations before starting locums. Once again, it's the seven considerations before starting locums. We just want you to click on that so you can learn more about it. But also at the same time, we want to let y'all know we got a course coming out. All right. So, Phil, all those questions that you have about like what rates you should charge and, you know, like medical malpractice and all that stuff, man. Listen, we got a course that talks about all of that. Yeah. All of that. So you can make $2,000 an hour, yo. I'm telling you, yo. You got to sign up for our course. I'm telling you. Okay. You know, but don't, sign make, up for, don't, but, don't make. But sign up for seven don't. considerations you, before you can, starting to make that, first. Phil. You're mm-hmm. going to make that. Yes, Phil. So anyway, yeah, so we do have a course and um, it will be coming out um, starting in the early months of, of next month. But if you want to be on the waiting list for that course, because seating is going to be limited. Very limited. Um, if you do want to be on the waiting list for that, go ahead and click that link. Put in your information seven and you'll also get before the seven locums. considerations before starting mm-hmm. locums. Um, and we'll essentially, you know, hopefully if you get into the course, we'll handhold you through either getting your first locums gig or optimizing the gigs that you currently have already. An hour. And um, yeah, we really look forward to hearing from you guys and hope to work with you in the course soon. All right, y'all. That's the end of this episode. Please, once again, let us know what you think um, by sending us text messages or you know how to get in touch with us. You know the vibes, all right? Philip, thanks, yeah. ri- <laughs> Philip, thanks again for writing us and letting us know which uh, questions you got. And don't forget to check out Seven Considerations Before Starting Locums. Y'all, we're going to catch you on the next episode, y'all. Peace. <laughs>